Hi, Tony. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for being interviewed by us. Pleasure. Tell me a bit about yourself. So how did you get into NLP? Crikey, it goes back a long time, um, but essentially uh, I worked in the optician industry, glasses, and got promoted. And it was a national company, and I was managing a team all over the country, and I said, help, I need some new skills. They sent me on a training course, uh, and it was essentially change management, but it was based around NLP. And I thought, well, this is kind of interesting stuff. I, and I kind of thought it was some kind of psychology toolkit. I wasn't quite sure what it was. Uh, the local college had an evening class, which was run by the, one of the tutors at the time that was running the program I was on, and I thought that was really interesting. And then I did my practitioner training, and uh, then I decided, well, what now? It was master practitioner training. And then uh, I'd done that, and then I took a, a little bit of time to reflect on that, and I thought, do you know what? Because by then I'd started delivering training courses at Swindon College, doing um, evening classes with NLP, introduction to NLP, and all that kind of stuff. I thought, really, I suppose I should get the proper trainer's badge. And so I did my trainer's training, which was great, actually. And it reaffirmed a lot of the things I thought about how you structure things and get things done. And it was good. It was very good. And I really enjoyed that. And uh, then a bunch of us got together. And we thought, OK, what are we going to do then? And we decided to create the UK College of Personal Development. And we've never looked back. Fantastic. So what made you decide to become an ANLP accredited trainer? That's yeah, probably a good question because there are lots of other things I guess we could have done and people do decide not to have any kind of external accreditation for, for what they do. It was clear to me that we wanted something because I didn't want to just be another training organisation. I wanted us to focus on the best accreditations that we could have. Um, and in the early days of ANLP, which we've talked about before, I thought... Jeez, it's not exactly brilliant, um, but it's something. And then I met you at an event, and I thought, this is a person who knows what professionalisation is all about, somebody I could definitely work with. Um, and then you set up that programme shortly after that, I seem to remember, and so applied, got scrutinised, <laughs> and uh, all of that stuff, and it was really, really good. But I'm really glad we did do that, because shortly after that, we went down the ILM route for some of our leadership things, and it was a good comparison of quality accreditation processes. And actually they're quite similar, which is, I think, a good thing for the ANLP, that has that academic rigour. And for us, it was, in the end, well, who else would we go with? I mean, there may be a couple of other organisations, but they're quite niche. And they, I always have a sense that they might be closed clubs, I don't know. Whereas I like the ANLP, I like its openness to all of the different schools. Um, there's always somebody at the end of the phone and uh, everybody's really, really helpful and, and I, you know, I like the stuff you guys produce, the journals and so on, so it's all good. Oh, thank you. So what difference has being ANLP accredited made to you and your business? Well, I guess on one hand it's hard to say because we've kind of been joined up from the get-go. Um, however, I, what I do believe is if, when we get feedback at the end of the programme from our students, one of the things that they often say is, one of the reasons we joined your course is because it's externally validated and accredited. Um, A, with the ANLP and the ILM and so on. Um, and only the other day, this woman rang up and she said, um, I've been looking at lots of different courses, um, you're one of four that I'm going to make a choice about this week. She said, on your website, it says, you are accredited by this person. What does that mean? Who are these people, the ANLP? She was like, so I explained it to her, professional body, standards, the usual kind of thing. She goes, okay, well, I'm going to check. Now, I don't know if she rang you or not, but my guess is she probably did, because the next day she rang up, she goes, okay, I've checked it out. It's, it's, you are who you say you are. They are who you say they are. They, blah, 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 blah. What happens next? I said, well, we've got some questions to go through. Make sure that, you know, it's a good fit for you, blah, blah, blah. And she starts tomorrow. <laughs> Fantastic. We do get calls like that on a regular basis. Oh, well, there we go. So, so yes, I think... Yeah. So, so I think, that, go back to the question, sorry, I'm waffling. Go back to the question, is it what difference does it make? I think it's, it's helped us be different and stand out. Mm. Now, we're in Swindon. Uh, Swindon is not a huge place, but there are three other people who deliver NLP training. Right. Um, we've been doing this for 10 years. 
over the 10 years, there have been probably about seven <laughs> other organisations and individuals have said, right, we're going to do this. And one guy, I remember, he spent God knows how much money on advertising. Big, huge thing in the local paper, big, expensive stuff in town, promo, blah, 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 razzmatazz. You know, six months later, he was gone. Right. Um, and there's a reason. There was no quality. Mm. And I genuinely believe that. And, you know, we're making our business to find out what it is that they deliver, how they deliver it and all of that. Who was behind it, accreditation-wise? Well, it was just this guy, you know. Um, so fair play to him for having a go, but there was no substance to it. Mm. And so a lot of froth, really. You know? Maybe that's a criticism, but I think it's it's honest observation. Um, so you know, the other people here in Swindon who uh, claimed... To, well, I was at a networking... I am waffling now, but this is an interesting story. It was a networking event a while ago, and the, there was a speaker, and she came up to me afterwards. She goes, oh, I see your banner, you do NLP. So oh, yeah, we do NLP, training, coaching, leadership and all that. She goes, you must know that person over there because they do the same as you. And I looked over and I, I know who the person is and I said, no, <laughs> we don't do the same. They do something very, very different to what we do. Ours is far more rigorous, academic quality. I said, well, there's no disrespect to what other people do, but I like to think we deliver what's the best we can. Well... You know, this, we're in our library that this is for the students, so we try and do the best we can. Mm, fantastic. So what would you say are the benefits of being ANLP accredited? So the sort of, what's in it for me? Um, I think one of the things, actually, and I didn't think it would happen, but it has happened, it's nice to know that I'm not the only one. That there are other people who are of equal mindset about quality, they're part of an accreditation programme. And now having the opportunity, I suppose, to speak to other people about, well, oh, we do it this way, what do you do? Oh, well, that's quite interesting. Our examination or assessment process is slightly different. And I suppose it's a peer group that I really feel an affinity with. And I don't want to say it's a club, because that sounds a bit elitist, but... But certainly, as a group of people who've got a similar mindset about quality, moving the profession forward, which are, you know I've talked about before, is very important, professionalisation. And, um, and I think it marks out the difference between the cowboys, people who claim you can learn NLP in 20 minutes, have this CD or whatever, I don't know I mean. We were given an example of that the other day. A potential student said, well, look, you're 20 days and you're doing all this stuff. All I've had to do is buy this book and a CD. It cost me 60 quid, and apparently I'll be a practitioner. Well, you won't be. And that's as simple as that. So I think for me, it, it demonstrates to myself, okay, we are going in the right direction. There's a peer group of like-minded people whom I respect and trust. And uh, I think that's probably the answer, yeah. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who, would be consider who may be considering ANLP accreditation? Do it. <laughs> And I don't, I don't mean that, oh, because I'm just, you know, because we did, you should type thing. But I think it will force you, in a good way, to look at what you do, and it makes you make improvements. And not just about what you deliver, because I'm sure if you're considering doing this, you're probably quite a good guy or woman doing quality stuff, but it will force you to look at processes, stuff that will keep you out of trouble with people who might take a pop, you know, the Advertising Standards Agency have got more teeth now, and fair, fair enough. I think having policies, processes, a decent assessment criterion, and quite frankly, if we all want, if we all say what we believe to be the case, this is a great set of tools and it's a great philosophy for, then why would we not want to be part of a professional, I don't want to say elite, but body of people who are moving everything forward? I mean, one of the cool things about the ANLP and one of my proudest kind of senses about that that I helped in some small way was was the academic conferences and and the journal Acuity and I was just just fantastic and and uh, when you published the papers from 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 that I just thought come on we're getting there because I remember years ago when I first trained and I said okay well where's the where's the stuff well there wasn't any I had Richard books and John's books and Robert's books. But that's their idea. I, I want somebody to... Where, where's the papers that says, oh yeah, we've tested this out and it's peer-reviewed and all of that kind of stuff. And now they exist. 
Hallelujah. And, you know, the ANLP have been central, in my mind, to making that happen. And I'm quite sure it hasn't been easy at times, and you probably want to go, rah. But, you know, at the end of the day, feel the quality. And that website is just fantastic, you know. Uh, one of the students was in here the other day, and we were making the comparison between the ANLP website and the service that's behind it, people answering phones and responding to queries, with another professional organisation, which I shan't mention because that would be unfair. And it's night and day. You know, Peter was saying, it's just as fantastic. That's a model of excellence compared to other ones that we have to deal with <laughs> <laughs> on a regular basis that can cause all sorts of frustrations. So I'll go back to your question, and I'm sorry I waffle a lot. But I think it's because I'm enthusiastic. And uh, so if you are considering it, do it. And if you've got any questions, ANLP will help you. Or somebody like me will be at the end of the phone to, to uh, offer advice and guidance. Thank you, Tony. Absolute pleasure.